The boy made his way back to the village in a state of great despondency. First of all, there wasn't going to be any fight. Next, his dear and honored friend the dragon hadn't shown up in quite such a heroic light as he would have liked. And lastly, whether the dragon was a hero at heart or not, it made no difference, for St. George would most undoubtedly cut his head off. The villagers were straggling homewards as he passed up the street, all of them in the highest spirits, and gleefully discussing the splendid fight that was in store. The boy pursued his way to the inn, and passed into the principal chamber, where St. George now sat alone, musing over the chances of the fight, and the sad stories of wrong that had so lately been poured into his sympathetic ear. May I come in, St. George? The boy paused at the door. I want to talk to you about this little matter of the dragon, if you are not tired of it by this time. Yes, come in, boy. Another tale of misery and wrong, I fear me. Is it a kind parent, then, of whom the tyrant has bereft you? Or some tender sister or brother? Well, it shall soon be avenged. Nothing of the sort. There's a misunderstanding somewhere, and I want to put it right. The fact is, this is a good dragon. Exactly. St. George smiled pleasantly. I quite understand. A good dragon. Believe me, I do not in the least regret that he is an adversary worthy of my steel. I am no feeble specimen of his noxious tribe. But he's not a noxious tribe. Oh dear, oh dear, how stupid men are when they get an idea into their heads. I tell you, he's a good dragon. A friend of mine and tells me the most beautiful stories you have ever heard. All about old times and when he was little, and he's been so kind to mother, and mother do anything for him, and father likes him too, though father doesn't hold with art and poetry much, and always falls asleep when the dragon starts talking about style. But the fact is, nobody can help liking him when once they know him. He's so engaging, and so trustful, and as simple as a child. Sit down and draw your chair up. I like a fellow who sticks up for his friends, and I'm sure the dragon has his good points if he's got a friend like you. But that's not the question. All this evening I've been listening with grief and anguish unspeakable to tales of murder, theft, and wrong, rather too highly colored perhaps, not always quite convincing, but forming in the main a most serious role of crime. History teaches us that the greatest rascals often possess all the domestic virtues, and I fear that your cultivated friend, in spite of his qualities, which have won and rightly your regard, has got to be speedily exterminated. Um, you've been taking in all the yarns those fellows have been telling you! Why, our villagers are the biggest storytellers in all the country round! It's a known fact! You were a stranger in these parts, or else you'd have heard it already. All they want is a fight. They are the most awful beggars for getting up fights. It's meat and drink to them. Dogs, bulls, dragons, anything so long as it's a fight. Why, they've got a poor innocent badger in this stable behind here at this moment. They were going to have some fun with him today. But they are saving him up now till your little affair is over. And I've no doubt that they've been telling you what a hero you were and how you were bound to win in the cause of right and justice and so on. But let me tell you, I came down the street just now and they were betting six to four on the dragon. Please. Six to four on the dragon? St. George rested his cheek on his hand. This is an evil world. And sometimes I begin to think that all the wickedness in it is not entirely bottled up inside the dragons. And yet, may not this wily beast have misled you as to his real character in order that your good report of him may serve as a cloak for his evil deeds? Nay, may there not be at this very moment some hapless princess immured within yonder gloomy cavern? The moment he had spoken, St. George was sorry for what he had said. The boy looked so genuinely distressed. I assure you, St. George, there's nothing of the sort in the cave at all. The dragon's a real gentleman, every inch of him. And I may say that no one would be more shocked and grieved than he would at hearing you talk in that... that loose way about matters. 
on which he has very strong views. Well, perhaps I've been overcredulous. Perhaps I've misjudged the animal. But what are we to do? Here are the dragon and I, almost face to face, each supposed to be thirsting for each other's blood. I don't see any way out of it, exactly. What do you suggest? Can't you arrange things somehow? That's just what the dragon said. The boy was rather nettled. Really? The way you two seem to leave everything to me. I suppose you couldn't be persuaded to go away quietly, could you? Impossible, I fear. Quite against the rules. You know that as well as I do. Well then, look here. It's early yet. Would you mind strolling up with me and seeing the dragon and talking it over? It's not far, and any friend of mine will be most welcome. Well, it's irregular. St. George rose. But really, it seems about the most sensible thing to do. You're taking a lot of trouble on your friend's account. He added, good-naturedly, as they passed out through the door together. But cheer up! Perhaps there won't have to be any fight after all. Oh, but I hope there will, though!